in speaking to you the first time, uh, you certainly opened my eyes to what was right in front of me and I wasn't seeing it, which yeah, was yeah. the implication mm. of so many people who had never been exposed to this pathogen who weren't vulnerable to it, yeah. right? That they had a completely effective response on board. Now, it does lead me with the next question, mm. which is whatever that innate immunity is, mm. why does it decay so rapidly in life? Right, I'm, I know a lot about senescence. This surprises me how quickly. Uh, you mean the innate immunity? Why does it decay? Well, I know why it decays. I don't understand why it decays so precipitously. Well, I, I'm not sure that is true, provided the innate immunity gets strained, right? You, you know, this is something which has been pretty well described essentially over the last 10 years that through yeah. epigenetic changes, you get, it's not a classical memory where you have a memory marker. Right but the epigenetic changes will lead to a kind of functional reprogramming of cells so that when they produce the antibodies next time around, they will you know, better recognize the pathogen. Okay, so, and, so, so then what you're telling of, me, yeah. I, th I think I get it, mm. but I don't know it, so mm. uh, help me out here. A five-year-old has pretty good innate immunity mm. to COVID because their system has not been programmed to very much mm. because it has not encountered very much. No. The more of that system that you narrow into some into responding to some pathogen that the child encounters, mm. the less of it is available for general use. Is that what's mm. going on? That this is a trade-off? As you get specific, you lose the general. Uh, yes, I mean, it's, uh, it's taking a few shortcuts, but I mean, that is certainly the way to explain it to the audience. Okay, and now in explain fact, it to me. And in fact, that would not at all be a problem if the narrow targeting, which has high specificity, for example, in form of, right. you know, uh, yes. if, adaptive antibodies. Right, if it was targeted at COVID. But it's not. Right. So I get this now. So basically the point is you've got some beautiful system that could in principle see anything and it will see a bunch of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the point is it can't do that forever. And so that I, I never understood this before. Yeah. And this has been a key feature. This has been one of the things yeah. that people don't understand about your model. Yeah. And I'm not saying that I understand whether your model is right or wrong. But when yeah. people talk, when sophisticated people yeah. talk about Gerrit Vandenbosch <laughs> and his view, they say, why is he so focused on the innate immunity and these peculiarities yeah. of it? And um, th I, I think this is a pretty satisfying answer, right? The effectiveness of an untrained immune system against COVID is shockingly good. Yeah, yes. but the only limitation is, is because of the affinity of these antibodies is lower. Yeah. Yeah? They interact, what they recognize, in fact, uh, Brett, are patterns on the surface of the virus, on the surface of the cells, yeah. patterns. And that is the beauty of the system that the patterns, these most likely glycan patterns, or shared amongst the broad spectrum of different viruses. Mm -hmm. Not only all the variants of SARS-CoV-2, but all the coronaviruses. Most likely all the glycosylated envelope viruses, like even influenza, etc. But because they bind through multivalent binding, their affinity, because in that case you talk about avidity of the antibody responses, so they have the strength of binding is, you know, inferior to the strength of binding of specific antibodies. So you could say, well, we do this all the time when we vaccinate our childhood uh, vaccinations, for example. Yeah. But, you know, there is no problem, as you were pointing out, if the specific antibodies that you induce do a perfect job because they have memory, they have strong affinity. That means they will strongly neutralize. The innate antibodies, they are perfect, but they cannot cope with a high viral load. But if you break through that innate immunity, you will have the phenomenon that we were just describing. You will get acquired antibodies. And guess what? These acquired antibodies will be a perfect match to the virus that caused the disease. Mm. Whereas now we are with the Wuhan, <laughs> the spike. It's not at all a good fit, uh, obviously, right. to the virus we are. Eh? So you see how powerful this natural immunity is, the different components. and. You know, that's why I'm saying, to your point, you know, 
I'm always saying I'm not a top virologist, top immunologist or a top vaccinologist, but you know, it's so multidisciplinary. I've learned to bring these fields together, even biophysics. If you don't understand the difference between a polyvalent IgM binding, you know, antibody and a specific IgM for a specific antigen, you know, you will never ever understand this, right? So, so it's so many different uh, aspects that need to be, con to, to be put into consideration. And I'm always saying, the, my, the value I'm adding, I hope, I guess, is putting the different pieces of the puzzle that I find in publications, etc., to put them together. And obviously, you know, today's science is no longer capable. That's why I, I love the thing you were saying at the Better Way Congress. We need to rebuild the science. And to some extent, for these complex problems, I think we need to also have a different approach to science in a sense that not thinking in silos, but a multidisciplinary <laughs> approach. Well, right? he here's the funny thing. Yeah. I mean, I agree with what you said mm -hmm. entirely, mm -hmm. and I'm frustrated to no end that the way scientific education has evolved mm. has caused this obsession with specialization. Yeah. And, right, and technologies. Right, yeah. Technology and yeah. specialization. And no doubt these things have their place. But the oh, problem yes. is synthesis is the natural partner of reductionism, mm. right? And it is not rewarded in our system. So what you're saying, well, I'm not a, you know, a great this, a great that, but what I can do is bring the things together. Well, to me, all of my favorite evolutionary biologists mm. were involved in synthesis. That's what mm. they were doing is taking all of these isolated things that don't seem to tell a story and figuring out where you have to stand in order to say, aha. Mm. That's what this is, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, and and that's really mm. um, it, it's such a it's such a crucial part of the process. And what we've effectively been watching. I mean, if we give the benefit of the doubt and we say, well, okay, they really screwed this up, but it was an honest error. Mm. Well, if it was an honest error, it was an honest error created by a committee of specialists where nobody remembers how to put the whole thing together, yeah. right? Absolutely. And it's a, it's Absolutely. it's tragic, and yeah. it's tragic at the level of like a million American deaths. Yeah. You know, it's, it's it's yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, I, I fully agree with you. Uh, you know, it's 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 just unbelievable that in you know in 2022 uh, where we have access to all this science, all these technologies, you know. All these, you know, institutes put like millions of, of, of taxpayer dollars into it. And we are not, we are not, we, we have no clue how to tackle, you know, a, a, a complex health problem. So th that also means we cannot give anything back to society right. from all the, the, the money that, that got invested, right? So all these publications is in fact, you know, they, they are essential, they are important, but when you start to have publications, you know, if, if it becomes an objective in its own right, I've learned to use science as a tool. And if I don't see any added value to the kind of problem I'm studying, I will not dig very deep. But if I think, you know, even a molecular detail, this could bring a piece of the puzzle then I will take a deep dive, right? Yeah. And so it's a completely different approach to, you know, to, to, to science. But, you know, you see it's needed in situations like this. The public health authorities, even the key opinion leaders, they don't know what's happening right now. Will you, do you agree? They have no clue where this thing is going, right? They, they, it's like the worst of all possible worlds. They yeah. don't know yeah. what's going on and they have no idea a, that they're in the dark, yeah. and B, that there's another way that wouldn't leave them in the dark, yeah. right? Yeah. We've just lost the understanding yeah. of this. And everybody who does it, all of the generalists are driven out because, frankly, you can't compete as a generalist inside of the sure. system. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, it, it's a tragedy. And when yeah, you think tragedy, about the yeah. immense costs of this, I mean, and they're not even all quantifiable. You know, no, this I week agree. at this conference, yeah. the one that uh, I'm reminded I'm reminded of how frightening this is, but mm. the gaslighting yeah. of the vaccine injured, mm. I cannot think of anything more diabolical than this, right? Oh. You injure people yeah. and then you tell them it's in their head, yeah. right? And then you, you tell other yeah. people that they're part of an anti-vax movement. You know, we are living in a surrealistic world right now. It's uh, nothing, nothing makes sense anymore of any, you know, this is, yeah. Yeah. I'm always saying, you know, it's, uh, it makes me and it takes something to make me speechless, but that, that makes me speechless, right?
Yeah, I, I find myself uh, yeah. also at a loss for words pretty frequently. Yeah, 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 yeah.